Hello all and welcome to the Rangers Women's Football Show. I am Rhiannon and, and as always I'm joined by my co-pilot Car. Car, how are you? Yeah, I'm good mate, good. How are you? I'm smashing. Good result of the weekend. Uh, fantastic. Uh, we'll get into it but what a game. What a team. I love them. I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> So on this episode, we'll uh, go through a wee run through of the game at the weekend. Uh, we beat Glasgow six three one at Auchinhoe, which was a fantastic result. Uh, we're recording this Wednesday, the 9th of February. We have a game tonight uh, against Hamilton, and then on Sunday the thirteenth, we have the Scottish Cup game against Celtic out in Airdrie. So we'll just do a kind of quick preview of those two games. So let's just jump right in, Carl. How do you think the performance was on Sunday? The only word I can come up with is relentless to steal it from last season. They just straight from the final uh, first whistle, we just went for them and gave them no no space, no respect, and just it was our game. It was just incredible. The performance of every single one of them was just perfect. Chantel, I think, was another standout that game. She had a, a really good clearance off the line, which was absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, we did go down to ten men in that game. Uh, Jenna being sent off for a challenge and one of their strikers. There's not much she could have been done, could have, could have done there to be honest. But it looks to me in the replay as if she's went to clear the ball and missed yeah. it and caught the player. And unfortunately, she's ended up with a red card. But I mean, credit to Jenna and to, to us, we took it in stride. And even with ten men, we still managed to get another goal, which I thought was crucial against them because they were starting to kind of liven up in the second half and they were finding those spaces for the passes and things. So we done. I think extremely well to win, win comfortably and still win with 10 players on the pitch. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have even known we were down to 10, to be honest. They didn't really give us much hassle the second half. The only one of their players I'd say that played incredibly was that OD. Yep. I see what I knew last year for them. She was incredible. She was nipping at Chantel's heels the whole game. Yeah. Um, but credit to Chantel, she didn't let it bother her at all. She had an incredible game again, like she did against Hearts. She's really come into herself this last few games. Definitely. Well, there was like, I mean, Priscilla Chinchilla, she was in next back pocket that whole game. She's normally very quick, always on the ball, always creating space for herself. And the, she offered absolutely nothing in that game. I think we did really well to shut that threat down, um, especially um, Hayley Lauder came close with the result free kick after Jenna Red Card. But, I mean, apart from conceding, which... Is unfortunate on our end. Um, you know, I thought we'd done really well. The first goal from Lizzie was absolutely incredible. Oh I mean, she God. had so much space. Like, the pass from Tess, the assist from Tess was just incredible. And then you can see how much space she had. She had all the yeah. time in the world and all the space to just go ahead and boot it. And obviously, she said in her post-match that everybody was shouting to shoot. So she thought, well, why not? And it was just an absolute screamer. Yeah. <sighs> I, I think we kind of went to the normal routes initially until Lizzie took the shot and there was not really much her way through um, for us and so Lizzie just getting that, that uh, goal and I think just kind of settled us because we kind of spoke about the first game against City it was very frantic and the ball wasn't on the floor as much whereas this game we played our game the ball was at our feet it was quick passing it was quick movement um, Cara Grant came on mm-hmm. uh, Kira. Kira Grant, excuse me, Kira Grant came on at halftime. Unfortunately, Chelsea Connolly went off injured. And I thought she'd done incredibly well in her first oh. one. She had a shot that just hit off the post. That would have been another scheme and had it went in. But I thought for your first game in, it was an incredibly crucial match for us because we've talked about this. I think the City games and the Celtic games will be the things that could win his league this year. So to have her come on and just start off as well as she did was really good to see. Yeah, I think that was pretty much her first touch of the ball. But the City player has it. She kind of just runs in behind, nicks the ball off her and just boots it. And it just glances the bar. Got in for her because that would have been an incredible debut. But she played an absolute great game. She's a great addition to her squad. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, as you said, the whole squad was just on form and on point that whole game. Um, the second goal we initially thought came from Bree. It was actually dubbed as an own goal. F- um, and Neve, is it Neve? Neve, yep. Um, Neve so, Farley. Neve Farley, yeah. I mean, it, to me, the angle it looked very much like it was it was Bree's, but they're saying it came off the the city player last. But he, you know what? I think even if she had got it, it probably would have been Bree because they were that close together, which was really yeah. difficult to tell initially. But 
Bree, I think Bree always has great games. Bree's just been steadfast and, and staunch for us, and like mm-hmm. I'm so I'm always really glad to see uh, Bree in the pitch. I think she's just that she's like a comfort setting if that makes sense. She's just in the defence. She knows where she is. She's always willing to get the ball and. I mean, the movement forward, Demi had so much space in that left-hand side, though, which was really annoying because we were trying the centre, we were trying the right, and and Demi and Lizzie had so much space on that left-hand side, and I don't think we capitalised that space as much as we could have. No, definitely not. Like, you just noticed it. So I don't know if it's just because we were sitting, we're obviously sitting really close to that left-hand side, but she's got hundreds of space and she's screaming at them to pass her and they always either go through the middle or try and get it down the right-hand side. And I, I don't know what it is, but they do it pretty much all the time. I, I just don't get what it is. They don't like playing it down that side. I thought Demi had a great game as well. As she, going forward, she was running at the players and they were kind of like, oh, it's if they didn't know what to do. We, I don't have to expect her to kind of bomb forward as much. She had really, really great line cup play with Lizzie on the left, I thought. Um, Sam was another one I thought was absolutely incredible on Sunday. Like, oh my goodness, ridiculous. Having her and Kirsty back, hopefully, like, obviously Kirsty was on the bench and never got on, unfortunately, due to that red card, so we never got to make that sub. But having both of them back is incredible for our team because Sam doesn't stop. You can see how much she's missed playing football because she's going in for everything. And I think at one point may have potentially injured one of their players and after a couple of minutes went over and apologised, which I thought was quite nice of her to go and do that. Um, but she, she's another one that she just goes in for everything. She, she's got no fear. And it's just incredible. And her play as well is just phenomenal. Like I don't know how she didn't get a goal herself, but just this it's squad is just incredible. Yeah. It's the forward movement that Sam brings as well, I think. So she's a very forward player. Um, I've noticed that we weren't kind of passing back or going sideways as much as we usually did. It was just that pressure going forward. Um, obviously, it paid off with, with the goals that we got, but like, just, we, as you said, relentless, even with 10 men, we gave them no space. We were constantly in their half trying to run the ball back. The third goal came from a mistake by the City defender. Lizzie just gets on the end yeah, She kind of scuffs it. Lizzie gets on it. Great cross by Lizzie and then Jane were header. And there's not really much Leah Alexander could have done with that. It was the angle that Jane hit it. It was right in the edge of the post and it just it slid in. I don't, it, any goalkeeper would have been hard-pressed to get a hand to that, I think. I didn't think it was going in, to be honest. No. See, from the angle that we were at, when she hit it, I was like, oh, it's going over. But it's just... <laughs> Jane is just incredible. She just, I, Honestly, I'm lost for words with this team, but that was great play to get it in. Jane's the only person there. Of course, she's going to get it. It's just what Jane does. But yeah. to be down to 10 men, uh, sorry, 10 women, and playing that aggressively, that forward movement, to still trying to go and score is just what we need to do. Heads never dropped at any point. Weren't thinking, oh, well, you know, this could be it. No, the whole team, the whole time was, this was our game, this is how we're going to play it and we're going to win it. Yeah. Because we had a solid at least 20 minutes left of the game when we were down to 10 players uh, because James' goal came in the 77th minute. Yeah. So there was still, and obviously with, uh, with injury time and substitutions, it was quite a good, you know, you're talking at least 25 minutes left of that game. Um so I thought they'd done really incredible defensively. We were solid. Um, again, there's nothing we could have done about the goal that came in from a corner and Claire Shines just got a, a kind of touched it and unfortunately it's been in the back of the net. But Megan Cunningham, when she came on, made a couple of very good saves for us. Um, and as I say, Chantel's clearance off the line defensively. We were absolutely solid that game. I, I thought we were anyway. Oh, absolutely. Like when we saw the lineup come out, I was kinda like, Well, where's Rachel? Like what's where's Yanni? Like what's happening? But obviously it came out that Rachel was injured and Yanni had a bit of a knock as well, so they didn't want to risk them, which is fair enough, like completely understand it. And you know, there's always a little bit of nerves before it, but as soon as the game started, as soon as Chantel started playing and obviously Bree and Nick and Demi, I was just like, That's nah, fine. Our back line was absolutely solid. And as you say, Megan had a great game when she came on, a couple of great saves and just does what Megan does. Meg, I think Megan's a really good keeper for us and should maybe get a run of games now that obviously Jenna's going to be out for a couple because of the red card. So maybe it'll be good for her to get a couple of games under her belt and actually show what she's capable of. Definitely. I mean, Jenna done incredibly well when she was on as well. So, I mean, our goalkeepers, I thought, played an absolute blinder. Both of them when they were on the pitch, which was obviously unfortunate with the incident with the red card. But, 
I mean, it was just, it's it sounds really funny because we were speaking about this in the group chat. I was more nervous for the Hibs game. Yeah. And it sounds really daft, but I think what settled me down so much was because of the fact that that Hibs game, we went one down and we, we got the ground out that result. We got that 2-1-1 and it was a fantastic result. So having watched that, I was going into this game and I don't feel like City are at their best currently. They've got a new manager in, but they don't seem to be at their top, at their peak yet. Um, so I think that's kind of done as steadfast in a way, but I just felt going into this game, I wasn't as nervous just because of the performance against Tibbs and what it done for us. And I don't know if maybe having that week off helped because obviously, unfortunately, the Aberdeen game was postponed due to the weather. Um and then obviously after the cup game on Sunday, which we'll, we'll get on to, there's an, another international break. So it's kind of lots of rest times for our players. But I don't know. I mean, we just came out the blocks, got all guns blazing. Like, we didn't give them anything. It was such a different performance compared to the first game against City at the start of the season. Yeah, it's a completely different City team. I don't know if it is the change of, of management or, or what it is, but they've been kind of struggling the last couple of games. You know, they had that 1-0 against Hamilton that they scored in, what, like the 86th minute or 88th minute or something. And then, obviously, against Hearts, they, they scored two. But again, watching that, they didn't look great. I, I don't know what, what's happened to them, but obviously for us, it's a good thing because we're absolutely flying. I'm fully confident in this team. I like I was nervous because I'm nervous for every game. That's the nature of football. But I knew that they could do it because the togetherness of the team, they're all there for each other. It's not as if there's anybody in the team that's, you know, oh, I'm here for me. Even like Jane up front, everybody's, you know, around her helping her. And when somebody else scores, everybody's running back to celebrate. It's a very team effort. And there isn't anybody that you'd maybe go, mm, she's maybe there for herself kind of thing. No, the whole squad as you said, are together, but I think with last season and what's happened last season, but also the players that we brought in, it's just... There's, I also think that having a good pre-season help because it let them bond, whether it's last season, they weren't as... It kind of stopped that with the league and it, it was just really annoying because they didn't get that pre-season, whether it's this year, they got that full pre-season, they were able to bond, the players came in kind of generally right at the very start of the season and they've just they've just gelled together so well. It doesn't matter who you put in what position, that team will perform for you. Yeah, I, I think having the Cups helps as well because it kind of breaks it up. So the first run of games was Cup games. So they kind of were able to gel, figure out how everyone played and get it sorted together. Obviously, the Cup defeat to say, like, was, I think, lit a fire because yeah. since then, we've been absolutely flying. You can tell how disappointed they were with that. So I yeah. think that's really spurred them on to go and be like, no, that's not happening again. Like, we're going to grab this by the horns and make it ours. Um, the, the performance between the cup game and then literally a week later we played them in the league was night and day. We were yeah. all over the top of them. Always we'll come on to Celtic and, you know, a bit later. But, like, the performances between literally in the span of a week was night and day. It was incredible. Absolutely yeah. incredible. And like I say, we've got pretty much everybody back. I don't know about the nature of Rachel's um, injury because they don't really tell us very much but Yanni said she's had a bit of a knock but potentially back. Kirsty's back, Emma Brownlee was back on the bench, yep. Megan Bell started and played pretty much the whole game until Jenna had to come off so we pretty much got the, the full squad as well as the youngsters that weren't on the bench because we had so many other people coming back and on the bench yep. so it's just pretty much everybody's back apart from yep. obviously Kirsty and Riley but hopefully she'll be back towards the end of the season. Fingers crossed. I mean, speaking of the young kids, we can kind of touch on this briefly. They did incredibly mm-hmm. well last night uh, for Scotland. Three goals, two from Jodie McLeary and one from Emma McLean. They started for Scotland last night. They won 4-1 against Wales. So congratulations to them. That was a fantastic result. Absolutely. Our, our young team are just incredible. Like I, I was speaking to Laura a little bit about this and I was saying they could go and play in England and nobody would bat an island. Like Sam, Kirsty, and then obviously Jody, Emma, and McLean. It's her first yeah. name. Emma Watson, Emma McLean. Emma McLean, that's it. Like they could go and play for a Chelsea, play for an Arsenal, or whatever, and nobody bat an eyelid because they're going to be absolutely incredible. And it's just a credit to our academy. Definitely. It's just amazing. But it's a family event. We met, we met Tessie's aunt and uncle. That was oh, great fun. <laughs> 
it was a good crowd. I will point out we had a really good crowd until the people had to leave and go and watch them in. And that, that was disappointing to see so many folk leaving to go and go to Ibrox. Obviously, people want to go and support the men's team, and I have no gripe against that. But the timings of games could be worked in such a way that they're not playing at the same time. So people obviously want to go and watch the games. The bigger games are obviously going to grow, draw a bigger crowd than, say, a Hamilton tonight. We're not probably not going to get that many folk. But they could do it on a Tuesday night or something rather than having it on a Wednesday when the men are playing or having it on a Sunday when the men are playing. They could figure that out so that they do get the crowds in that you want to support the women's team, especially when they're doing so well this season. Yeah, I think that's a big thing we have discussed. And that's not just our team, that's most teams across the league. It, it's not conducive for getting crowds and getting money in and, and, and growing the game in a sense when, as you said, like tonight, and the women even are on Rangers TV because the men came on, which is fair enough. That's what obviously draws the crowd in. But it's pretty difficult for people who want to go watch the women's team but can't because it's like, well, is it, who, who do I go to? Like, I've got the women's game, but the men are on. Like, And it's quite hard. And I think that should be that's a league thing. And I think the league need to try and sort out, you know, when and where and so they can get a good crowd in. And it's not, you know coming in against a, men, a men's game because that's helping absolutely no one. No, like I understand it needs to be late on a, a weekday because most of the teams in the league are part-time, so they're going to be at work and then have to like go get travel wherever you're going, say if it's from Aberdeen or Hamilton or wherever. They have to travel, talk and how obviously or wherever the game is. So I get that it needs to be 8 o'clock, but they could have made it like half seven even. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. a lot of people are saying, well, we would have gone if they maybe don't go to the men's games or whatever, but my kids have school the next day, so realistically, it's not possible because it's going to be a late finish. You've then got to walk up that road, get your car, and drive home. And it is out of the way. Like, well, even Laura, because I was well, obviously speaking to Laura last night. Um, Laura's like in Falkirk, so she travel comes to the games. So if it's an eight o'clock kickoff, it'll be close to ten when it finishes, and then Laura needs to drive through to Falkirk to get home. It's you know, it's no a, a good thing to have, as I said, kids with school or people with work or whatever. It's a bit yeah, a bit yeah, late one. I think seven half sevens more than amenable to have your game kick off, but maybe that's just me. I don't. It's something they need to think about, and they need to get lights on that road. I know I've said that a million times, but there was a couple of people I noticed behind us at the game were talking to each other about it. That you yeah. know they don't like walking up that road and it's dark and everybody's got the torches out. It's a lot of traffic. It's a busy road. It's a small pavement. It just I need to get things sorted, but definitely. Absolutely. I think if the team start winning things, and maybe they'll put a bit more money into it and get these things sorted for us. I mean, it could be the now, and then when the team are, maybe if the, when the team win the league or whatever, it will draw more crowds, so there'll be more scope to do things like this. But um, because we were, I was on Twitter arguing with a guy about, you know, saying we shouldn't have a women's team and it's costing us money. I'm like, you do realise the women's team have their own sponsors. They they. They are people specifically sponsoring our women's team because they believe in what Rangers are doing with them. That's generating money. That's not costing money. That's that's what's paying for all of that stuff for the women is those sponsors on their shirt. That's why it's BioWave. That's why it's DCP. That's why it's it's not the same as a men's shirt. It's completely different. It's for the women because they've came in to sponsor the women. And that is a good thing because that's just drawing more money into the club. It's more revenue for us. And it's just, it's, it'll expand through all of the club, it's not just the women, it will help the men's team, it will help the youth, like, it will help everybody, it will be a massive benefit in the long run. Yeah, absolutely, and I think a lot of people don't get that, I think they just think, oh, the men's team are throwing some money at this, when that, that's not how it works at all, but I don't know, that's, some people don't like women's football, and that's up to them if they want to, but maybe they should just not comment on things that they don't care about, I don't know. Yeah. So, <laughs> moving on, as I yep. said, today is the 9th of February and we have a game against Hamilton. We played them at the start of the season. I believe that was our first game because unfortunately yep. um, it, one of the games was postponed. I think it was against Partick Fistle due to mm. an outbreak of COVID. Quite a comfortable win, Carl. You yeah. were actually at that game. Um, yes. How do you think tonight will go? I mean, realistically, Hamilton are sitting bottom with, what, five points, I think. They've not got very many. Um that first game, obviously, it was our first game of the season because the party game got called off. 7-0, Jane scored four, very comfortable, looked very fluid and it was a good game. So I'd imagine much of the same tonight, to be honest. And we were obviously flying, Hamilton were struggling a little bit. I'd imagine it'd be pretty similar. Any thoughts on the formations of the team tonight? Do you think Chess will be back? What do you think? 
I don't know. I'd, I'd like to think that maybe Yanni would come in, give her a couple of games if she's feel it, like obviously if she's fit enough. If Malky kind of thinks it's okay, I'd like to see Nick move back to her natural position because she said after the game she doesn't like right back. Um, but pretty much, I'd, I'd probably start the same team. We'd maybe bring in a couple of youngsters, just give them some game time. It depends how quickly they got back from Wales. If they're maybe still in Wales, because I know they've got a game on Friday um, in Wales again, so they're maybe not back. So probably I'd I'd probably go same same team, but obviously Megan in goals because um, we've not got any option. But I think it'll be pretty comfortable. Hopefully Yanni back. Um, probably same formation. Malky doesn't really change the formation that often, other than moving some folks side to side. I'd like to see maybe Brogan come in, get a game. Um, because you know Brogan's a really good player for us. Get a couple of goals under our belt again. Get kind of rolling again. Yeah, I mean, I would. I mean, I would like to see kind of Brogan on one side, Megan on the other, and Tess is always that really strong kind of your central midfielder, I guess. Uh, Kira Grant could come in potentially where she was because she had a, a great game. I, I, I'm kind of agreeing. I don't think there'll be too much in the way of changes. Um, unless he kind of wants to rest people. For Sunday, which is is fair enough, we'll just yeah. kind of need to wait and see. Um, with that one, I think with the Calabria of players, we don't necessarily need Jane or Lizzie on the pitch to score goals. I think we've got goals kind of all over the pitch, which I think is a massive benefit to us. Yeah, e- even if we rested them, Kayla and Brogan, you know, yeah. start them get because you know Kayla is really good. She came on um the end of the last game, and her hold up play in that corner was just phenomenal. She yeah. was just my ball I'm keeping it like and nobody could get near and um, so I don't know if we'll need much of that tonight to be honest I don't know if she'll need to do much hold up play um but probably going forward she could easily get a couple of goals as well as broken so we'll come on to Sunday then obviously it's another game against Celtic and that is away from home with a way out in Airdrie um I kind of touched on it earlier the first cup game was not the best. I think there was a lot of kind of defensive errors. We kind of let them had too much room, too much space. They were kind of dictating the play. But then fast forward a week later, it was the total opposite. Um, we had a really good game against them. We were very strong. Obviously, the goal came from Jane in like the second minute, and that was yeah. that was kind of it. How how do you see Sunday going? Um, are you nervous? Are you excited? What's your thoughts? Um, I'm always nervous, especially like City and Celtic are always going to be the games I'm nervous for. But in a logical standpoint, we're flying. We've only drawn one game the whole season and obviously lost the cup game. Celtic are kind of struggling a little bit. They they drew with Hibs and what a last minute equaliser from Hibs. They've yeah. drawn I think two or three games now. Um, they're not doing the best, but then they won the cup against City so maybe that will spur them on and obviously it's against Rangers at home to them so maybe that will spur them on so I don't know I, I'm a bit nervous but I think this squad could easily go and win again and win comfortably I think I think if we play the way we played against City and we play our game um, I think we'll be fine because we're, we're due to smash them that that game uh, away from home in the league we could have get four easily we could have scored four easily. So I think if we can just create those chances and get those chances, put them away, get the get the goals, you know, you could be three 0 easily against them. I think Zoe Ness needs to come back in. She was a big difference maker in that the, the, the league game. I think because she was not scared to go in for a ball, go in for a challenge. But she said Sam's back, Kirsty's back. So you know, there's a lot of kind of players that weren't at that game who who are and they're back and they'll probably be ready to go, especially Sam and Kirsty, they're as staunch as we are, they'll yeah. want to go to that game, they'll want to win, they won't they won't want to, to have us out of another competition from them. No, absolutely. I, I don't know, like, it's, they're not a great side, so I like watching them, they, they, it's very stop-start, it's not got much fluidity, so if we get it on the front foot, and especially Sam and Kirsty, Jane, Lizzie, we could easily put away a, lo- a lot of goals, but that is my great this season. We get a lot of chances and we don't capitalise on all of them. And I know Malky said that a few times as well, that even in like the Steny game, we could have been up 20 if we'd actually capitalised on all our chances. So that's something that they need to work on and they get an opportunity, they need to take it. Definitely. I think 
you know, that could be the difference maker. Our goal difference is really good just now um, in the league, but just putting all of our chances away, creating that buffer. Obviously, we've got a really good opportunity tonight um, to, keep, to continue that, potentially go, you know, five clear tonight from City. They need to play tomorrow and they play Celtic, and that could be a tough game because, as we've discussed, City aren't playing well. I know Celtic aren't either, but, you know, I think, to be honest, if that comes out of the draw, that's, that's you know, more than a benefit because that you know, cuts that to four. That'll be four points here, gap. And we still got that game in hand against Aberdeen. So that four could potentially come seven, could be eight. Mm. You know, so you're looking at all of these these kind of caveats and these things. But, you know, I think your big thing is to just take it one game, game at a time, start with tonight, build up to Sunday. But, you know, having that I win tonight to put the pressure on City would be great. But Sunday, as I said, if we play like we did against City, uh, last Sunday will be absolutely fine. Yeah, like the momentum's in our favour. Like City are struggling, Celtic are struggling, everyone else in the, the league is doing what everyone else in the league does, but it's definitely in our hands to go and play the way we've been playing. We'll absolutely s- s- smash them. Talking about City, uh, Celtic here in the cup game, I, I think generally everybody firing and everybody back, we could we could win easily. And I hope this doesn't get clipped and come back to bite me. <laughs> it's one of those games everybody will be up for it because of what the game is, you know. So, but it's just when you're looking at it for the way they have been playing and the results they've been getting, you know, and how we've been. You're kind of looking at it on a basis, but you don't, you know, as you said, we don't know what's going to happen someday. We don't know how they'll play. We don't know how we'll play. But we just need to go in with our focus and our mindset in our game and go for there. Because as you said, if we play our game, we could we could win and we could win comfortably. But we just need to go on with the mindset that, you know, it's just another game. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to have Rachel back because their pitch is so big. You saw it from the first game that long balls from Rachel are up to the front three but is where we got most of our chances from. So to have her back, because for Scotland, for Rangers, she does incredible with those balls. So I would love to have her back fit for the Cup game on Sunday because we really need it. Definitely. Definitely. Well, Kat, thank you so much. No, Can I just point out, so I was doing all the, the goal tallies. Lizzie's sitting on 14 at the moment. Jane's sitting on uh, 11. Last season, Lizzie was top goal scorer with 16 goals. The year before that, Kirsty was top goal scorer with 24 goals. And we currently have both of them in our squad. Lizzie is obviously going to pass that this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, Kirsty's just coming back. We pretty much got top goal scorers from the last few years in our squad, and it's just Jane's nipping on her heels. I think Jane could easily catch up a little bit. She puts more of those chances away that she gets instead of firing them straight at the keeper, <laughs> which is my gripe. But uh, yeah, that was my my last point. Oh, that's well. I mean, that's not a bad thing to have in your squad. Oh no, absolutely. It's just. I can't believe what I looked at. I was like, who was the year before? And I just kind of went back and I was like, Kirsty, 24 goals? It's just it's fully fit. Kirsty, how it is incredible. Kirsty came in for us and scored with that. I think she got a hat trick in her debut. You know, so she's an actual goal scorer and I'm really glad we've got Kirsty. I mean, I'm glad we've got all the players we've got that are absolutely incredible. But having Kirsty back and having a front to your Kirsty Howitt, Lizzie Arnott, and Jane Ross. So it's a lovely prospect, I think. Yes, and, and I would imagine when team sheets come out and those names are on that, the other teams are going to look at that and be like, what are we going to do? How are we actually going to break that down and stop them other than slight tackling them and taking out their ACLs? Like, and, that, and that's what ended up happening against... That's what happened to Kirsty. So, yeah. well, hopefully she's back and hopefully she, she gets to kiss that badge. Yes. So it's good to see Kirsty back. I love Kirsty. I think Kirsty's an incredible player. It was absolutely gutting that she was out um, last season, last April it was. It was so close to the end of the season. Yeah. Absolutely gutted for her. But we're back and we're ready. So hopefully a good result tonight. Just take Thank it one you. game at a time. Um, and it's not even it's not even streaming anywhere, unfortunately. I've no, I just know when it's not on BBC Alba, it's not on BBC Scotland, it's not on RTV. Like, unless I put a live stream up, nobody's going to be able to watch it unless come to the game. 
it's about the only thing you can do really, which um, is unfortunate, but it is how it is. But thank you so much, Car, for coming on. Co pilot as always. Um thank you for watching folks. Really, really appreciate you spending half an hour of your time with us. Uh, keep the battle fever on and we are the people. <laughs>